In 2022, the Antonov An-225 Emeria, the world's largest plane, was irreparably destroyed by Russian forces during their invasion of Ukraine. The damage was so extensive that many thought it marked the end of this record-breaking Cold War era aircraft, relegating it to history. However, the Ukrainian government had different plans. It now appears that the An-225 might make a remarkable comeback. So how? Let's find out in this episode. To understand why the Antonov An-225 Emeria is being rebuilt, we need to know what made it special. The Cold War, period of intense rivalry following World War II between the United States and the Soviet Union and their respective allies, spurred advancements in space technology, powerful weapons, and the aircraft to deliver them. From the late 1960s, the United States operated the formidable C-5 Galaxy, which once held the title of the world's largest transport aircraft. A decade later, the Soviet Union responded with the AN-124 Ruslan, a creation of Antonov, the leading Soviet aircraft manufacturer. Yet, when it came to hauling items as substantial as space shuttles, the AN-124 was not enough. This is when Antonov was once again entrusted with the task of designing and constructing the ideal aircraft for this purpose, which was named the Antonov AN-225 Maria, with Maria meaning dream in Ukrainian. The primary role of the AN-225 Maria was to ferry the Buran space shuttles, which were a part of the Soviet space program, and the components of the Energia rocket, which served as the launch vehicle. In December 1988, the AN-225 made its inaugural flight, claiming the status of the world's largest airplane. This colossal aircraft measured 275 feet in length, had a wingspan of 290 feet, and tipped the scales at over 280 tons. Equipped with six ZMKB Progress D-18TA, or Lotarev D-18T, turbofan engines, it was also the most potent aircraft of its era. After the Cold War ended in 1991, the AN-225 came under Ukrainian control. By 2001, it had been converted into a colossal cargo hauler with a maximum takeoff weight of 640 tons, nearly double that of the C-5 Galaxy and Boeing 747. It boasted a range of around 2,800 miles with maximum payload and a speed close to 500 m feet. In August 2009, the Emery earned a spot in the Guinness Book of World Records for carrying the heaviest single cargo item ever recorded in aviation, weighing 187.6 tons. This record-setting load was a 174-ton generator which, along with its specialized frame, was shipped from Frankfurt to Yerevan to be installed in a new power station in Armenia. Fast forward to February 2022, where we witnessed such a hurtful truth that the AN-225 was one of the very early victims of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Hostomel Airport, the home base of the aircraft, was targeted early by the Russian military due to its strategic potential as a foothold. Capturing the airport would place Russian forces merely 10 kilometers or 6 miles from Kiev, the Ukrainian capital, enabling them to airlift additional troops, equipment, and supplies. Hostomel Airport, also referred to as Antonov Airport since it is operated by Antonov Airlines, was presumably considered less fortified than Kiev's primary airports. Nonetheless, the Russian attempt to seize the airport was met with robust opposition from Ukrainian forces, resulting in significant damage to the infrastructure, including runways, hangars, and the control tower, thwarting its use as a strategic entry point as intended by the Russians. Regrettably, the initial offensive, which became known as the Battle of Antonov Airport, led to the destruction of not just the airport's facilities, but also several aircraft. An Antonov-12, an Antonov-22, and an Antonov-124 undergoing extensive maintenance were heavily damaged. Three aircraft were utterly destroyed, an AN-26, an AN-74, and notably, the Emeria, the AN-225. The exact cause of the Antonov 225's destruction still remains uncertain, but it is known that at the battle's outset, Russian attack helicopters launched rocket fire. So the cause could be one such rocket striking the open hangar housing the AN-225. The remains of the AN-225 stand in its hangar alongside a few Cessnas. The aircraft's front has been ravaged by fire and possibly artillery assaults. Both wings have sustained damage to varying extents, with the right wing drooping and resting on its severely damaged engines. Fortunately, on the left side, it seems that all three engines might be recoverable, and the wing itself is not extensively damaged. This was a devastating loss for Ukraine, as the AN-225 had been a source of national pride and had helped transport medical supplies during the COVID-19 pandemic. But why didn't Antonov fly the AN-225 away to ensure its safety? The question of why Antonov didn't evacuate the AN-225 to safety amidst the Russian military buildup is a matter of some debate. Antonov did indeed relocate several aircraft before the invasion, sending five AN-1 124s and a number of smaller planes to Leipzig, Germany, where the airline has facilities. The N-124 left at Hostomel Airport was undergoing extensive maintenance, with
with its landing gear, engines, and slats removed, and the AN-225 was also present. Antonov's Facebook post indicated that the AN-225 was in maintenance, with one engine recently reinstalled, and had only about 70 tons of fuel, not enough for the flight to Leipzig. However, Chief Pilot Dmitry Antonov, an ex-commander of the AN-225, contested this account, asserting that the engine had been reinstalled days prior to the invasion and that the fuel level was nearly what he had previously requested for a flight to Leipzig. He also noted the lack of a flight plan for the AN-225, implying there was no intention to fly it out. Dmitry raised suspicions about certain managers of Antonov Airlines who had left for Leipzig before the invasion, questioning their possible Russian affiliations. Although Antonov Airlines denied these allegations, Dmitry maintained that NATO and other allies had warned of Hostomel Airport being a likely Russian target before the airspace closure and invasion. The company acknowledged this, but stated they had attempted to evacuate all aircraft not under heavy maintenance. Subsequent developments saw Ukrobaronprom, the parent company of Antonov Airlines, remove several senior managers over concerns about Russian connections. Now it seems to prove that Dmitry was right the whole time. The Ukrainian government refused to see the destruction of the AN-225 as the final chapter. President Zelensky swiftly vowed to reintegrate the AN-225 into the global fleet, honoring both its legacy and the memory of Ukrainian pilots who perished in the war. However, with only one operational AN-225, which was irreparably damaged, and considering its enormous size, question arises, how does the Ukrainian government plan to accomplish this during an ongoing conflict? It's a little-known fact that the USSR initially ordered three N-225s, but later reduced the number to two. Work on the second AN-225 began, reaching about 65% completion before the Soviet Union dissolved. The major structural components, including the fuselage, wings, and landing gear, were finished. However, with the space shuttle program losing its purpose, the development of the aircraft was halted in 1993 by then-Russian President Boris Yeltsin. Antonov attempted to revive the second aircraft in 2006, but the project was abandoned due to prohibitive costs. There were whispers of Chinese interest in funding the completion in 2016, but nothing materialized. By 2020, Antonov CEO declared the aircraft economically impractical due to its uniqueness. Completing the second AN-225 would entail substantial costs, and its specialized role suggests it might not recoup the investment over its operational life. Nevertheless, following the first aircraft's destruction by Russian forces, the Ukrainian government has demonstrated a remarkable determination to bring the second one into service, despite the significant financial burden. The completion of the second AN-225 is a complex decision with both pros and cons, but unfortunately with cons being the major ones. The aircraft is mostly intact and well-maintained, with many components available from the AN-124. However, the original production facilities are defunct and the workforce is likely retired, posing a challenge in assembling a team with the necessary skills. The uh, N-225's 1980s design may not meet modern environmental standards, suggesting costly modifications or even a complete rebuild might be more feasible. Despite these challenges, a modernized AN-225 could be highly desirable. The main obstacle, however, is the cost. President Zelensky's estimate of 550 million U.S. dollars is dwarfed by the Ukrainian State Defense Company's $3 billion projection, and experts suggest at least five years of work would be needed to make the new AN-225 airworthy. This leads to the question, is national pride worth a multi-billion dollar expense of completing an aircraft with such a specific function? The projected $3 billion cost is substantial, especially when compared to the Boeing 747's construction costs of around $150 million. Moreover, Ukraine faces more urgent challenges, such as the ongoing war with Russia and the need to rebuild critical infrastructure. The World Bank estimates that Ukraine's reconstruction could exceed $411 billion, making the $3 billion potentially more impactful if allocated to these efforts rather than a seldom-used cargo aircraft. Yet the AN-225 MRI holds immense sentimental value for Ukrainians, symbolizing hope, strength, and resilience. Rebuilding the aircraft is seen not as a financial investment, but as a legacy project. However, funding remains a hurdle, and external investment appears to be the most viable solution. Rumors suggest that billionaire Richard Branson, co-founder of Virgin Group, may be interested in the project. During his visit to Ukraine in the previous summer, British billionaire and Virgin Galactic founder Richard Branson aimed to explore opportunities for creating a business that would work with both the private and public sectors to enhance support for Ukraine. He met with President Volodymyr Zelensky and found the experience in the war-affected country to be deeply humbling and emotional. Branson's visit to Antonov Airport, where he saw the remains of the Emrya, was accompanied by Ukrainian officials who shared their ambitious plans to construct
construct a record-setting new aircraft after the war, featuring advanced digital technology as mentioned by Parliament member David Arakamia. Moved by the resilience and optimism of the Ukrainians, who still harbored dreams of aviation breakthroughs amidst hardship, Branson expressed his eagerness to help. He also showed interest in the restoration of the Antonov airfield while visiting Hostomel. However, interest does not really equate to investment, so we still have to wait and see. Also, in March 2022, Antonov's CEO announced a fundraising initiative to rebuild the AN-225, with design work slated to begin by November of that year. Antonov employees have been salvaging parts from the original MRIA's wreckage for the new aircraft's restoration. Antonov is also engaging with global aviation companies and potential cargo clients to expedite the process. Microsoft has contributed by adding an AN-225 flight simulator to their video game, with proceeds from the $20 download reportedly supporting the AN-225's reconstruction. Ultimately, the decision to resurrect the AN-225 is complex. The aircraft was a unique emblem for Ukraine, and while its completion might bolster national morale, economic considerations suggest it may be prudent to delay the project until Ukraine stabilizes. Yet, the emotional significance of repairing the damage inflicted by Russia could inspire the Ukrainian people to once again dream of a brighter future. So, what do you think about this potential resurgence? If you think Maria is coming back soon, please comment number one down below in the comment section.